Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nuddle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're investigating a quite prominent investment strategy that is very heavily utilized by practitioners, but often overlooked by academics, which is sector rotation. This is a go-to technique to leverage your forecasting of recessions or general economic downturns by investing in defensive stocks during recessions and stocks that are positively exposed to the business cycle during expansions. And we have got this... Um, general uh, quite um, common sense understanding of which stocks or at least which sectors can be defensive or recession proof those are generally companies that produce uh, goods and services that uh, people consume no matter what something like consumer staples or consumer non-durables something like food basic beverages uh, necessity goods as well as things like retail chains uh, shops such as large uh, consumer stores you can think walmart in the us or tesco in the uk isn't it you can think about healthcare services that people have to consume no matter what's going on in the macro economy and you can think about companies that um, issue households with various bills uh, most commonly it's utility bills and sometimes you also include telecommunication bills like your phone or internet bills into the same mixture so we have this um, general understanding that uh, consumer non-durables or consumer staples, telecommunications, uh, retail companies, uh, healthcare service providers and utility providers can be considered defensive stocks or recession-proof stocks, at least to various extents. Uh, other sectors, most notably uh, information technology or high-tech sectors, as well as various industrial sectors, as well as consumer discretionary producers, for example, automotive manufacturers, manufacturers of luxury goods, manufacturers of domestic appliances, for example. Uh, goods and services that consumers can choose not to buy when uh, there is a recession, when times get harder and uh, less cash is available, basically. Those sectors can be defined as uh, non-defensive and uh, vulnerable to the overall business cycle dynamics. And the logic, the inherent concept of the sector rotation strategy, well, it's in the name. You uh, increase your exposure to defensive sectors when there is a recession on and you increase your exposure to non-defensive sectors or cyclical sectors when there is an expansion going on uh, how could you know first of all uh, where to get this data on sectoral performance quite comprehensive isn't it uh, as well as how to know uh, whether there is a recession or not well here uh, i use quite uh, conventional commonly recognized data sets for that I use uh, Kenneth French website to retrieve monthly performance of uh, 10 industry portfolios starting from July 1926, so almost 100 years worth of data until September 2022. So again, both very historic and very recent data is included there for the total of uh, 1,155 monthly return observations. And I use the National Bureau of Economic Research data to identify whether there are uh, recessions uh, in a particular month. So this particular dummy variable uh, tells us zero, there is a recession, or one, there is not a recession. So we can see that the first recession in the sample started in November 1926. That's quite um, obvious, isn't it? We can also see the uh, Great Depression uh, emerging in September 1929 and not letting go until March 1933. And there are also further recessions down the line quite prominent and we can also see the most recent recession that lasted only two months march and april 2020 and we all remember uh, what this was associated with currently as per the national bureau of economic research we are not in the recession which some of you might consider quite weird however this is what the formal definition gives and here we have got uh, 1155 months and a total of 201 of those months are defined as recessions. So around fifth of the time, uh, the US economy uh, has been in a recession over the past 96 years. And uh, those have also become less frequent with time due to uh, more prudent and more efficient monetary policy. That's the most um, 
compelling explanation that academics have. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, does the strategy that uh, deals with incorporating recession information and uh, uh, monitoring the exposures to defensive and non-defensive sectors throughout the business cycle, does it really deliver? Does it deliver historically across the past 96 years? Does it deliver more recently? We'll be able to see it for ourselves just now. And to make sure that any abnormal returns that we obtain from sector rotation cannot be explained by uh, simpler um, factors, we have got FAMF range 3 factors and the risk free rate to perform our abnormal return regression using the FAMF range 3 factor model that we had a video on recently, so check this out if you're interested in the three-factor model on its own. But sector rotation is the hero for today, and here we'll just define our sectoral allocations in recessions and expansions. So we'll first start with a very broad definition of defensive sectors, and uh, consider those five, again, consumer non-durables, consumer staples, telecommunications, shops, so retail, healthcare services, as well as utilities, as all being defensive and we'll get one-fifth of our capital, so 20%, into those five, and the other five we'll consider uh, cyclical sectors, so not recession-proof, and therefore we'll completely divest from them, get zero exposures to them, if there is a recession going on. And the reverse will be observed for expansion periods, where we completely divest from defensive uh, non-cyclical stocks and uh, increase our exposures, lever ourselves towards cyclical stocks. And now we can figure out uh, what the performance of this strategy is. First of all, we have to look whether there is a recession on. So, and if there is no recession, we can simply get our cyclical allocation down the line. So we refer to this particular row, we lock the weights, and we refer to our sectoral performance. If there is a recession going on though, we need to apply our sector rotation weights, which are the recession weights over here, increased exposures to defensive sectors, and we refer to the same monthly sectoral returns here as well. And that, if we double right click it all the way down, will provide us with the simulation of uh, sector rotation strategy throughout the 96 years. And subtracting the risk for rate would allow us to calculate access returns, that can be plugged into the FAMA range three factor model to determine whether the strategy has any degree of statistically significant outperformance. Here we have got a template that we can build. We can select five rows and four columns. We'll have factor exposures and alpha on the right hand side. We'll apply the linest function, plugging in the excess return column and the three FAMA range factors market, size, and value. We'll need the alpha, the constant, so we put one here, and we'll need the additional statistics, such as standard error, so we'll put one here as well. And we enforce this function, getting our result template over here. We can see that the exposures to value and size of the sector rotation strategy are quite small, uh, less than 0 0.05 in any direction, in terms of absolute value. Market beta is quite close to one, although a little bit smaller than one, and alpha is positive, which is quite promising. Uh, we can also see that uh, the three factors explain uh, almost 93% of the volatility of this sector rotation strategy, so the strategy does not expose us to much idiosyncratic risk. 93% uh, of the risk of this strategy is systematic, either coming from the market or the other uh, factors, such as size and value. We can now calculate the test statistics for our coefficients and our intercept, our alpha. And uh, the only thing that we really care about here uh, is whether this alpha is statistically significant. So we can use the two-tailed t distribution, input the absolute value of the t stat, as well as the degrees of freedom that are returned on the right-hand side of the fourth row of our line of tablet, as always, and lock in the column here as the number of degrees of freedom is the same. And we can see that over the 96 year period, the alpha of the sector rotation strategy is positive, around 23 basis points, 0.23% per month, and statistically significant in a very decisive way. The t-stat of 5 is, can be considered uh, overwhelming statistical significance. Now we can test for a more narrow definition of defensive stocks and say that, well, 
let's uh, get rid of telecommunications and shops and stick with a narrower definition. So one third in consumer staples, one third into healthcare, one third into utilities. And now we've, we'll have seven uh, non-defensive sectors that will allocate a seventh of our capital towards when there is not a recession going on. And that will still generate a quite sizable, almost identical, 0 23 basis points per month alpha with a T-stat that is even higher and uh, HML and SMB exposures that are even less um, prominent than in the previous case. So this particular definition of uh, defensive strategy of a sector rotation um, allocation would be quite a bit more popular and quite a bit more stringent. So use that if you would like to perform a more conservative uh, sector rotation strategy. However, the one with five sectors we used um, at the start is also working quite well, as we've seen by the alphas. Um, now, what we can also uh, have a look at is whether our sector rotation strategy has been delivering for the more recent time period. So again, we've got 96 years of data, so let's consider 50 most recent years, and that would allow us to get back to, um, well, 600 months. So we'll only check it for the most recent 600 months, changing the cell reference to start from October 72, which would be exactly 50 years. We can see what's going on here now and check that, well, although the alpha is now smaller, it's only 13 basis points per month, uh, it is still statistically significant, although now only at 5%. The degree of statistical significance of the past 50 years if we think about the sector rotation strategy, has been uh, somewhat reduced. The final thing I wanted to show is if we go back to the full sample estimation, uh, you might uh, wonder and you might even critique this approach as in this case, we know whether we are in a recession or not almost immediately. So we can perform our uh, sector rotation strategy as soon as we are in a recession, although most of the time it takes um, some uh, reflection to get an idea that we're indeed uh, aiming at recession. So what I wanted to do here is to implement um, sort of a login indicator and uh, from the fourth months onward change our recession uh, reference so that we have got a three month lag before we recognize that we are in a recession and uh, can change our allocation to defensive sectors. That, as we might see, does decrease our alpha substantially. So this uh, superior timing that we implemented at the start was crucial for the magnitude of alpha that we've seen before. However, the alpha still remains statistically significant at 1% with a T stat in excess of three, which can be considered again, still quite um, substantial statistical significance. And finally, um, after we've undertaken all of those regressions and uh, have been uh, persuaded that the uh, statistical significance of this uh, outperformance is present, we can also look at the sharp ratio of the strategy to make sure that this is investable and attractive to uh, institutional and individual investors. So we can calculate um, annualized excess returns for both strategies. So again, keeping in mind that those returns are in percent, as Ken French always reports them, we'll need to perform uh, the divided by 100 and then multiply by 100 manipulation to keep that uh, mathematically plausible. So we do product one plus the sector rotation excess returns divided by 100. We'll raise it to the power of uh, 12, as there are 12 months in a year, we've got monthly data, divide by 1155, as we've got 1155 observations. Then we times it by 100 again and subtract 100, so we remain uh, at the same um, magnitude as we initially did. And that gives us an excess return of 9.46% uh, for the sector rotation strategy. And for the market, we can simply copy this formula, paste it here, and change the cell reference to the market factor, giving us an excess return of 6.44%. So we can see that annual outperformance in terms of access return is around 3% per annum, which is not only statistically significant as we've seen here, but also economically significant. Uh, this is not a negligible amount uh, in terms of, um, well, asset management considerations. Now we can compare the risks by using uh, sample standard deviations of our access returns 
and to annualize them we need to multiply by the square root of 12 as there are 12 months in a year giving us uh, the risk of 19 uh, percent annual volatility of 19 percent for sector rotation and annual volatility of the following value for the market factor we can see that the volatility for the market is slightly lower 18.54 percent and uh, that corresponds to 18.99% for sector rotation. This difference is not necessarily that massive, and we can compare sharp ratios to um, persuade us um, the same way. So we have got the sector rotation sharp ratio at 0.5 and the market sharp ratio at 0.35, meaning that the sharp ratio of sector rotation is quite uh, substantially higher than the one of the market, which further uh, confirms the findings in the farm French three factor model show in a positive and significant alpha. That means that sector rotation strategies have historically worked reasonably well on the uh, US stock market and the definition of defensive versus cyclical sectors uh, could have been leveraged by investors to generate abnormal returns. And this is perhaps something to consider if you believe that recessionary fears right now are quite high. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any first suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider support us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.